Hey guys, it's Vmasters Reactions, and we're back with Season 7, Episode 2, The Review, two years later of the episode Varmints. Also, if you guys aren't familiar, last week we started doing this. What I'm doing is, at least two years ago, two years and two months on the last episode. This one's probably the same. Maybe we're bridging the gap a little, but we're watching Uncivilized Elk's reviews of each episode because Uncivilized Elk didn't start doing this till season seven. I figured it'd be a good way now that everything's in the books as far as us watching this in full on Patreon to also give my two cents on what I think two years later and then watch Uncivilized Elk so that we could take that review, add anything to the mix that I forgot or I didn't notice or I didn't touch on, and then we'll talk more at the end after we see that. So in the beginning, we're going to go with my review. I had just finished editing it. Episodes release on Monday around noon. So I just dropped it. I edited it this morning and I figured, let me take a break. Let me take it all in and then we'll talk. So we've got Princess Bubblegum, Peppermint Butler, and Marceline. Mainly the three people focused on this episode. More so Princess Bubblegum and Marceline. Peppermint Butler is just this loyal sidekick dressed up as a pumpkin. They were shooting and killing off varmints. I thought they were going to be tiny little varmints, but obviously I knew better because I've already seen this episode. They're very reminiscent, I feel like, of Tremors mixed with aliens, mixed with starship troopers, perhaps, because their tails shoot eggs. The eggs look like something out of aliens. The creature, the massive mother varmint, looks like the mother alien, sort of, like Pieces taken here and there, mixed with a tremor, like I said, but fires its tail eggs like that of the beam from Starship Troopers. I said all this during the episode, but I'm just recapping. Then we have Princess Bubblegum sitting on a porch, content to let the Candy Kingdom go to the King of Ooh and maybe fall to pieces. She's basically like, yo, I gave it a shot. I care about you. You guys don't care about me. I'm done. I know she still cares, but she's kind of like fed up. So she's sitting on her porch. Peppermint Butler and her are literally armed with shotguns and acting like crazy rednecks that are, well, I guess not crazy rednecks, but acting like rednecks that are just, you know, defending their land and shooting off varmints. Reminds me a lot of Tremors, how Kevin Bacon and others acted that role to chase off the Tremors. Regardless, we go underground. We yet again see this subway tunnel that looks like something out of Ghostbusters 2. The same type of tunnel we dealt with going underground to see Nettie in the previous episode. I don't necessarily love the way season seven's starting, but it's interesting. It's intriguing, the angle we're going. But Finn and Jake took a backseat. They are sidelined the last two episodes, even the first episode. They're just knights in shining armor, so to speak, that work for King of Ooh and hate what they're doing and are kind of just his lackeys. So now we don't even get Jake and Finn in this episode. I don't think we saw them at all, which is very rare. Even in the episodes, we don't get Jake and Finn. We at least get like a touch or a flash or even at the end of the episode. I remember things were like Jake and Finn just like, you're like, hey, how's it going? All right, bye. Credits roll. Something as silly as that. But we didn't even get that from what I remember. The way it ended, I feel like Peppermint Butler said something. And I even said, where is he? I don't see him. And then it went to credits. So... I mean, hey, I love me some Peppermint Butler, Princess Bubblegum, and Marceline episodes. Mainly them, touching on their relationship. We went down underground. We saw that Princess Bubblegum tagged the wall. At the end, we find her tag, and we had to bust through that wall. Was that some sort of sign that Princess Bubblegum tagged the wall that we needed to bust through? Marceline turned her arm into a giant mother varmint-looking creature and burrowed through the wall. She said, I got it. I saw how the varmints work. We're going to make a giant one out of my hand. She's a shape-shifting son of a bitch and it manages to go through the wall. And we get to the top. We refuel Marceline with a red nose and some lipstick. I think that was a lip balm or something that we ate down in the sewers, which probably gave her the ability to do so. Regardless, we get back to the top and we never really took care of all the varmints, so to speak. And Princess Bubblegum does acknowledge that. But I guess we got bigger fish to fry and we're off to now take back over the Candy Kingdom. I don't know if you guys hear that in the background. Somebody must have got a new dog in my neighborhood and there is some sort of animal or dog outside screaming to the heavens and woke Coco up. 
So Coco's come on over here to be like, I am loving you, but also afraid of the noises outside. So let's just jump in. We're going to watch Uncivilized Elk, another six minute review of Varmint's. And then we'll go from there. You guys want to see more of what I do? In the description of every video is a link for Patreon. You'll see every episode of Adventure Time, Steven Universe, Infinity Train, Peaky Blinders, Doctor Who, Person of Interest, Avatar. We're starting Death Note, Legend of Korra, My Hero Academia. But when I say starting, we're already probably halfway through all of season one on all those shows. Hundreds of others, full on edited, hundreds of movies. Check in the description for Patreon. If not, season seven, episode two. The review of Armits. An emotional trip of such breath packed into an 11 minute time frame. This is the adventure time I completely have my mind melt over. The right. first episode of season Big 7 fan. did not mark an incredible start, but the second episode, this episode, All right. it was glorious. So uncivilized. The humor was hitting the mark elk. practically right off the bat, while the last episode couldn't really get its jiving step in regards to comedy in my Love opinion. It. And even had the humor been totally absent in this episode, the emotional bond explored between PB and Marcy was strong enough to hold the episode completely on its own. Agreed. This character-heavy episode was a complete delight to watch. Of all the episodes centering around the relationship between Marcy and PB thus far, this one is easily my favorite. Princess Bubblegum is off her rocker a bit in this episode with her off behavior. Her Redneck Love style it. PB is Redneck a silly and amusing PB. front she's put That's on for herself, my, and it's actually my favorite visual design of her yet. I dig it PB too. PB is clearly trying to cover up her sadness by taking on a new identity, which includes being ridiculous. I loved it. Leave it up to Adventure Time to explore a range of coping mechanisms for its characters. In Varmints, Marceline is frustrated that PB didn't inform her of her lost kingdom or discuss the emotional turmoil she is going through. PB chalks it up to embarrassment, confusion, and not actually seeing Marceline as a person who such an issue could be discussed with. As PB herself states, that last part was a mean thing to say, but it's done in a very blasé manner that feels like PB is trying to deflect her sadness in the form of crude behavior. Marceline Agreed. understands this, as her face retains a pained and concerned expression for her friend even while she is being insulted. The constant references to past events between Marcy and PB don't feel forced at all, which is a feat that is hard to pull off when so many remember that time moments are squeezed into 11 minutes. Scenes the two are having a hard time talks. maintaining a conversation about the present after drifting apart, in addition to the recent events PB experienced being something she doesn't want to discuss, lest all her bottled feelings end up erupting. You get a genuine feeling that the two want to connect, but are having a hard time getting a meaningful conversation going. Yeah, like they're so afraid when they end to up bring up visiting an underground specifics. site filled with past memories. It feels natural for them to bring up past events the two shared and work off of those to further develop their relationship with one another. Marceline actually displays a rather kind and understanding nature throughout this episode. She's still trying to joke and create an atmosphere but of she casually was poking fun, which is where her comfort zone in regards to interpersonal interactions lies. But when this shakes the lid on the feelings PB is trying to keep bottled up, she quickly shows genuine regret at her carefree words. While Marcy isn't good at anticipating PB's harsh reactions, Marceline is very quick to shoulder the blame after the fact. She understands the recent turmoil of her friend and ultimately holds no resentment toward PB whatsoever, which is best demonstrated when Marceline says PB has nothing to apologize for. Marceline does a lot of transforming in this episode in ways we have never witnessed before. That one was there was badass. a werewolf-like transformation all the way back in but season one during the episode Henchman. Big werewolf. But this was a more grotesque-looking wolf. I said than it during the, the episode. This episode. Craziest. I can't form say yet. I'm a fan of this new transformation she shows. How it dare you. makes me think that somebody took Nathan Explosion from Metalocalypse it was and turned rough. him into a furry. It was a little then rough. Then Marceline's ability to shift into werewolves. essentially and anything. That? I have to assume. That felt a bit odd simply because I never got that sort of indication from her powers Agreed. throughout all six seasons before. Seemed extreme, Introducing an ability of this it. caliber this late into the series feels out of the blue, but it's not that big of an issue and it's nothing to really get hung up over. Agreed. So now let's talk Princess Bubblegum. I thought the same thing though. has long been established as tyrannical, a control freak, and morally ambiguous. A dictator, if you will. 
Under her literally sweet exterior, us viewers realize dwells a person who is actually extremely harsh and potentially dangerous. That's While some episodes in season real. 6 did explore her humanity, no recent episode has humanized PB to the extent that Varmints has. But we do we way connect more back later. to what makes us love PB, and these tender and human characteristics just make her such a more dynamic and interesting character, especially when contrasted with the negative traits I described earlier. The struggle PB had with maintaining an expanding kingdom, the and the initial goodwill that somewhere down the, the road Matrix. transformed into something far more nefarious. This is explored through the agony PB feels now that her people have abandoned her. And the moment when PB finally breaks down is truly mesmerizing. PB's graffiti reminds her of a time long since past, when she still had free time to goof around with Marceline. And PB continues on to think of the kingdom she has built since then, and all the citizens she has created, raised, and taken care of through grueling and non-stop effort. And she thinks how she lost her hat, her hat, and her pumpkin patch, and the trust of her citizens, and the kingdom, and even ended up pushing her friends away. And this train of thought leads Princess Bubblegum to finally break down and let her feelings flood out. It is a paramount and powerful moment when PB finally confides in Marceline and realizes she has a shoulder to cry on. I have not bothered mentioning the Varmints despite them being the name of the episode because ultimately they are merely providing the structure True. for the episode's real content to be we formulated don't around. See them again, don't get me from wrong, what I battling the Varmints was a fun little adventure, but the real adventure here is watching PB's internal journey the and Marcy's desire shared. to regain the bond she shared with her friend. And that's what makes this episode so amazing. Incredibly well-executed and touching emotional development layered over an action-filled amusing escapade. That is what best embodies Adventure Time. Quality. All right, everyone, that's it for Uncivilized Elk's review of Varmints. I gave my two cents in the beginning, so let's now take what I said and take what Elk said and put it all together. I mean, I honestly agreed with a great deal, if not everything, that Uncivilized Elk said. This wasn't about the varmints. I said a lot about the varmints in the beginning, comparisons to Tremors, aliens, Starship Troopers, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it wasn't about the varmints. I don't think we ever even see or hear from the varmints again, unless I'm mistaken. There is at least two plus seasons left, because obviously season seven just started. And we go into season nine, then Distant Lands. Now Fiona and Cake is starting tonight. At midnight or 3 a.m. tonight is Fiona and Cake for the first time ever. We're getting a spinoff of Adventure Time, and I leave tomorrow. So I'm going to get up early, react and edit Fiona and Cake, and then literally hop on a plane and go to Atlanta for Dragon Con for like a week. So I don't think we've seen the Varmints again. I don't remember seeing them again, but like Uncivilized Elk said, this isn't about the Varmints. This is about... Marceline and Princess Bubblegum and the fact that Princess Bubblegum has this hardened exterior because she knows she is the one that has to hold everything together. The candy people are not the brightest people in general. Peppermint Butler is probably her most loyal sidekick by far and even Peppermint Butler from time to time and we've seen it happen in future episodes gets sidelined or has things happen even how Uncivilized Elk was saying how Peppermint Butler was kind of like taking a step back and getting emotional and letting herself express feelings towards Marceline and the fact that shit is a little stressful and she is pretty much the one that everyone turns to to fix scenarios. She broke down, she cried, and then she got herself together. We go back to the porch at the end of the episode. Peppermint Butler was like, yo, I'm over here or something. I don't remember what he said, but I thought we'd hear it, but we didn't. Uncivilized Elk just ended it on the porch, and we know what happened, so it's not that big of a deal. PB basically needed the varmints to go underground with Marceline, have an adventure, express herself, bond, share that bond to grow. We see PB doing a lot of crazy things. The cat has to shake the whole world and, and jump all over the place in a 10-minute video. We know that PB gets way worse or to more extremes. I'm forgetting the series of events that is to come because, like I said, we have a lot of episodes left. But we find out about, like, the Rattleball guys and how the Banana Men 
were kind of intentionally kept dumbed down and ruling so that she can manipulate them. I mean, like I said, I haven't rewatched any of the episodes from here to the end. I've never rewatched them. I only have what I've retained in my mind when we first reacted to them. But when I re-edit it, I get a better idea knowing how this all concludes. And then I watch Uncivilized Elk and then we go from there. But like I said, we know PB definitely does some way crazier stuff for the sake of the greater good of the people, though, I'd have to say. PB's never selfishly doing anything for her own personal gain, I'd like to say. I feel like even if it seems that way, that it's always about the people or the sake of ooh, like the world in general. Either way, we now see the direction it could take and the the lengths at which PB could go to. But we also, like Elk said, saw Marceline shapeshift unlike we've ever seen before. And I said that during the episode, how I'd never seen her in that sort of werewolf. She's been a werewolf before, and he even showed and pointed it out. I remembered she had. I just couldn't remember specifics, but I knew it was way more subtle than we saw. Now she's shape-shifting into this gigantic werewolf monster that just crushes things with her hands and feet. We see her shape-shift into a gigantic varmint that chews through a cinder block wall and up through the ground into, or, or at least back to, Princess Bubblegum's porch. And then, like I said, I guess we never see the varmints again, but that wasn't important. The important he thing here was to show that Bubblegum Princess and Marceline go way deeper, no pun intended, than we thought with their bond. We saw the writing on the wall, literally, from PB to Marceline. I forget what the writing said, but, it, you know, it, it's expressing what their relationship was and where it is still and could be going. And we know, because subtle things were thrown at us, Way, way later from now, I feel like in the finale, we finally got confirmation of their relationship. Spoiler alert if you haven't concluded this, but obviously we know there was confirmation that things are going on. And even in distant lands, we got stuff. Great episode. I would have to agree with Uncivilized Elk. It was definitely a step up from the episode one premiere. Not that it was bad or anything, but like I said, it was so much dealing with the King of Ooh. And I did read the comments and people were saying, King of Ooh is annoying, but King of Ooh is entertaining. And I would agree with this. I think the King of Ooh is so annoying and so wackily fantastical, but also entertaining to watch. He is goofy and he did have the m -m -m money, money, m -m 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 money, money. Like he, he has his moments and Toronto is great too. They're both just ridiculous on another level and on the side of things that I don't want to turn out to be the outcome of Ooh, because obviously I want Princess Bubblegum to take back over and run things, and we know she does. I just wanted to point out the King of Ooh, even though frustrating and annoying, is great entertainment, and you need a person like him. Most of the time we get characters like that, I rag on him, but I say it often that without characters like that, where do you go? Like, you need them, and he's great at what he does. Toronto, too. I'm assuming we get Jake and Finn back in the next episode. I honestly don't remember... What happens? I just see that is Cherry Cream Soda up next. So next week, I will be getting back from Dragon Con Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. So I'm either going to do these early or they're going to be slightly delayed. But you will get episode three next week and we will do one of these and review it as well. So you guys want to see more of what I do? In the description of every video is a link for Patreon. You'll see every episode of Adventure Time, Steven Universe, Infinity Train, Legend of Korra, Avatar, Peaky Blinders, Doctor Who, Person of Interest, hundreds of movies and shows. We're starting Fiona and Cake tonight, ending Justified tomorrow night, right before I leave. I don't even know if I'm going to have time to edit it, but it will be up on Patreon in full the season finale of Justified City Primeval. Hundreds of other movies and shows, like I said, check in the description for the link of Patreon, if not comments down below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.